The Summer 18 season in Rhode Island is underway. We have some new analysts here to break down the game. Six teams return. A couple teams in some new uh, outfits, new, new uniforms looking pretty nice. And two new teams are going to break them all down for you on the week one post-game show. No sponsor. Come on, guys. What, what, you guys don't do we have a sponsor all, yeah. Last, yeah. all last year. Brought each. to you by no one, as they say on <laughs> TNT, right? Uh, I'm Joey. We have Ellis, Tyler, and Mike uh, going to help you break down the games. We'll start with two returning teams that face off in week one. Wild Hogs and the Werewolves. The Werewolves win, so I was talking to Gino and Brian uh, Heston after the game. They started off hot last season. They're back to a 1-0 and start again this season, 69-43. You played in this game, so we'll, we'll go down the row and we'll save you for the end. But what did the Werewolves do? They had a couple new pieces, basically brought back the same team. You guys had some new faces too, so working that out always takes a little time. But what did you guys see from the Werewolves in your first time seeing them? I think the Werewolves definitely had an evident uh, size advantage. Definitely utilized their two big men, uh, played heavily in the post, and they also shot very well. Uh, their guards were definitely uh, moving the ball really well, and I think that's really uh, was the key to their success, I think. There were two players that really stood out to me for the Werewolves, <coughs> Gino and Brad Allen. Brad, I noticed, played with a lot more confidence than he did at the beginning of the season last year. He looked very dominant, very good, both in the post, out of the post. He made a really couple nice passes, too. <laughs> passes from the post and Gino shot Gino shot the ball better than I'd really seen him shoot all last session so if they can keep that combination going add Heston in there they're going to be a, a lot better team this session than they were last session so they get a win on a Heston off-ish yeah night. I mean the man really never has an off night he, he plays defense so that's always on mm -hmm. I'll but that. I know yeah so go ahead uh, I mean you, you were facing some of that but yeah. I want you to touch on some of your newer players I mean no Joey Bones tonight so yeah. he is on the team that so big. That, that's big that's guy, and so know. talk about some of the new guys that you're still trying to work the kinks out with. Uh, well we have Sonny number three uh, I think he's going to be trying to switch and get a new jersey number mm -hmm. but um yeah I think uh this is his first time ever playing on an eight and a half foot league and um, his jump shot is way off it, it was like so inconsistent with it but I think that's something he'll pick up um, Kenny Richards is our other new guy. He's he's got that. Um, he's got like a lot of energy coming off the bench. I just didn't think he really had it tonight. We were all kind of flat. They brought a lot of good um, like ball pressure too. I think I had five turnovers, which is you know you can't win like that. You know, without Joe, you guys look like a completely different yeah. team. <laughs> our inside presence. We have another guy who's six four too that didn't show up. So like. Our twin towers are there. He's cutting it close there with the six. I know, we're gonna have to take out the tape measure. Right? <laughs> yeah. He was the one in the top plays who had that one-handed putback. Yep. Joey Coro, mm -hmm. Joey Bones. Yeah, a ton and of so a ton of those plays. plays. Yeah, for sure. And so the closest game of the night, Swish Kebabs and Boom Shakalaka. Again, two returning teams facing off in week one. Everybody will play everybody, so we'll get to see everyone square off. But Swish Kebabs and Boom, Boom Shakalaka with the win. Nate Stitchell returns. And a lot of uh, and Trevor D'Amico, I'm curious, you didn't see him. You, you remember him yeah. from a long time ago. Very impressive. And, um, yeah, so I want to touch on them. And again, boom with the win by nine. Close game down the stretch. I think they made some plays down the stretch when the Swish Kebabs weren't able to do mm -hmm. so. So what, I mean, Boom Shakalaka went in, what, double overtime in the finals yes. last time we were here. So what, you know, changes do you think that they made and, and how is that going to help them this season? Obviously, no uh, no Sweeney this year, no Brandon yeah. Sweeney, but Trevor helped a lot. Trevor's a uh, very good inside player. Looked like he can get anywhere he wanted to in the paint, out of the paint, move the ball, shoot the ball, make his free throws, which is huge. And then Stitchell came back and put up 24. Lucas Martin was 22, shooting like an all-star again. Like, they just looked unreal. They looked like they probably could have won the final. If they didn't right. go on the other court and watch a lot of cities, right? you would have you guessed that these guys were the team to beat. We'll get there, yeah. Their, their lineups are really good. I mean, when Stitcher comes in, he brings all this energy. But yeah, uh, down the stretch in the second half, kind of let them uh, back. I think it was tied 79. And then, yeah, late in that game, they got uh, on a 6 0 run and uh, took it. But uh, that was a close call there. Yeah, doing, I, I really thought. Uh, watching that game, I was like, yeah. wow, it's tied. Wow, it's a one point exactly. game. Like, I thought Boom was ahead. They, like, they controlled the tempo. No matter what the score was, they were in control of. The Absolutely. pace of that game, and that was a difference maker. Close one. If it was 79 all, which I believe you, that's an 11 2 run to close the game. I think it was 75. 75 all. Right. So I can do math. 15 to 6 run. Either way, to close still the game. Impressive. So, right. Still very impressive. In, in the final minutes, that's game, how you yeah. win games. You mentioned Lob City, mm -hmm. aka formerly Green Squad. Green Squad, formerly um, Elon. That's right. <laughs> so just keep, they keep, they, 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 they know how to get the jerseys. They got <laughs> three good right. names, huh? There you go. And they get the jerseys with them. So Lob City takes down a new team, the Bucket Chasers. Again, Tough when you're a new team facing off against a team like Lob City. It's like welcome yeah. to the league, as Nate yeah, Stitchell right, says. Right. Yeah, you know, as Nate Stitchell yeah. says when he dunks on somebody, he's like, "Hey, welcome." You know, <laughs> and Lucas Martin could be in that three-point contest this year oh, that we're really? having. So he was um, lights out. Right. 
And so that's some boom shakalaka for you. Lob City, as we were talking about, big, big win. You guys didn't see it. I'll chime in. Mike, I mean, well, you guys know a lot of the players on that yeah. team. Darius was back, which I don't know why I pointed at you. Mike, we'll, we'll remember him from the fall. So adding him back with Cody, Vic, yeah, and they Brent. just have, like, too much firepower. Someone said it earlier, it's like um, bringing Darius in is like uh, – the Warriors signing KD. <laughs> it's like, now nah, they just got, like, another player. Except another it's like Shaq. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like yeah. the Warriors went out and signed up, prime Shaq. They just have too much firepower. Like, if you score, like, there was a couple of highlight plays where they would score, and Lob City would literally inbound it and fall all the way down and dunk it, and it's like, all right, like, yeah, yeah no, they just have so many different ways to, like, counteract whatever you bring to the table. And, I, mean, I mean, the new team, too, uh, what's their name? Bucket Chase. Bucket Chase is the other team. They have a lot of pieces. I think they will be a good team, mm -hmm. and they kind of like found their rhythm at the end, but it's a, it was too late. That adjustment period. Having yeah. Darius is like exactly. a cheat code. You need a bucket, you throw it to the really tall guy on the Dude, low rim. For real. It's, it's, he can shoot, he can dunk it, he can back you down. Like He's a cheat code in yeah. this league. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we'll be talking a lot about them, I'm sure, for, oh, yeah. uh, for Lob City. So Halfway Crooks and Shake and Bake, so one of those new teams against a team that's been around for a while. 64-42, Halfway Crooks 1-0. Yeah. And some new pieces for them, so yeah, you're, go ahead. I mean, I, I want to congratulate. Like it took, took you a while last season to get that first win. So, like, right off the bat, get it out of the way. Maybe know. go on yeah. an early run. See yeah. yourself in the top of the standings. <laughs> I like it. But, I mean, Lincoln had his shot. You saw it right away. He made the first basket of the game of the three. Jared looked aggressive handling the ball. Ferranti uh, was hitting shots. Too. Yeah, Ferranti was hitting his shots, too, especially from long range. And that always helps. Yeah. And Shake and Bake look a little overmatched, I shook. think. Yeah, they, they look <laughs> shook. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just, and, and, you know, obviously... Half shook, cook. shook in the sense of the, that adjustment period we talked about. Um, I'm a little we've all played numerous games on in this setting, mm -hmm. and uh, you know them just trying to get used to how everything works. Four on four, a little different. The low rim, the shots aren't falling, and how fast the game is. I think took some time. Definitely a very exciting team to watch. They had a lot of energy, so I'm going to be excited to watch how they develop and you know get accustomed to the style of basketball because you know it takes it takes a while for everyone. You know, full squad too. That helps any. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, they were making a lot of rapid subs. If anybody comes against them with, like, missing a guy or something, that might be trouble. They can catch him. Uh, so I want – what team impressed you the most? And we'll get out of here. So if any team you saw – oh, God. <laughs> I get a wink from Mike Bandieri. It's never a good sign if he's winking at you. Uh, so, like, what team impressed you the most tonight? I like the, uh, I like the werewolves. Mm. They, I thought they, they looked like a much more mature team than last year. They have a coach now. They look like they look like an act well put together team. I think they're gonna they're gonna do some damage. Clipboard always helps make the coach look more legit. <laughs> That's what I heard. Well, Polo too, the college Polo. Polo. I would have been too. He definitely <laughs> looks the part. <laughs> um, the team that most impressed me, uh, probably Lob City. Honestly, I mean I, I, they're impressive already, but adding Darius is just like frankly ridiculous. I would normally say the Werewolves. I'm not trying to steal them, so I'm gonna come up. With, I mean I, I haven't seen any of these teams before. Uh, Boom Shaka. Boom Shakalaka was was really uh, fun to watch. There, I thought I know they struggled a bit there at the end, but I know uh, when Stitcher comes in, it's just mm -hmm. very very exciting to watch and very fun basketball. So nice week one in the books. Eight more to go for the regular season, a nine game regular season. Every team will make the playoffs, and we'll get to that in August. So stay tuned for the articles on these games. Those highlight videos are all up on the site, thelegacyleagues.com. Power rankings and top plays coming this week as well. And stay tuned for the podcast. Uh, we can break some news here. Maybe I'll cut this up and throw this on Instagram. Who is joining you on the podcast this oh, season? Oh, we got Brian Heston and then Gino Forte every now and then. So a couple of the werewolves. So there you I don't go. know so, why I've been speaking so highly of them. <laughs> yeah, coach. right. You know, so, <laughs> so, give you for that. Yeah, so inside <laughs> information. So, you, you know, when, when he's the werewolf's biggest fan now, I had to, Josh why. is no longer here doing the podcast. I had to do it. <laughs> had, to, had to team up with the Werewolves. So, team that's been around a while. They're They'll be helping breaking down the game. Yeah, yeah. Respect it, yeah, and then we can still have guests on as well. So, yes. um, we can get to that as we get through the season. Of course. Of course, yeah. Mike, oh, God, he's winking again. <laughs> it means it's time to go for the week one post game show. So, for the guys, I'm Joey. We'll see you back here on Tuesday, every Tuesday throughout the summer, bringing you Legacy Leagues action from Johnston.